Now look, I don't bear a grudge. I'm not an angry man by my very nature, but I gotta get something off my chest. Now as compares, I'm not gonna say runs like a well-oiled machine, but at the very least it does run. This channel, it runs like a well-oiled penny farthing. And I had a whole schedule laid out for this week. I had a whole schedule laid out for the next two weeks. And today was supposed to be a lovely little video talking about SSDs versus hard drives on power consumption performance that works. I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to publishing it. I was looking forward to sharing it. But this happened. The Asus Store Flash Door Gen 2 happened. And because of you, Asus Store, and I know you're watching this, you've forced me to have to postpone that video. So if you guys are annoyed at home, not getting to watch that video right now, don't be annoyed at me, I'll be annoyed at Asus Store. That's right, I don't bear a grudge, but I will be coming for you guys because I'm furious. That is right, that fantastically petulant, childish introduction aside, we gotta talk about this. Asus Store's Flash Store 2 system. We've heard word on this, and frankly, if anyone who's been following the world of network attached storage and indeed flash storage for the last 12 to 18 months, you'll be well aware that last year Asus Store absolutely killed it with this, the Flash Store 6 and Flash Store 12 Pro, a 6 and 12 by desktop affordable N2 NVMe SSD flash NAS system. What a mouthful. It was a system rocking at that gate at $449 and at $749 or thereabouts for these M2 NVMe systems. And generally at that point, if you wanted to have a flash system, you were looking at thousands upon thousands of dollars. They not only arrived at a decent price point, they had a decent little low power CPU that managed to get the job done while out without costing you a packet in the old electricity bill there. And it was popular. I would argue it was the standout release of last year. Unsurprisingly, Asus Door didn't sit on their hands and do nothing afterwards. They expanded, and that's what brings us to today, the new release in that series that's going to be uh, demoed and shown off next month. This is the Flash Door uh, Gen 2 series, arriving in a 6-bay and a 12-bay system. These are Zen 3 AMD embedded Ryzen chip uh, enabled flash system. These are ECC memory DDR5 systems rocking out the gate. These are Gen 4 M2 NVMe systems and dual 10 GBE network attached systems. Arguably, this pretty much smashes all of the criticism people were leveling at the Gen 1 there. Again, arriving uh, originally with an Intel Core N5105 Celeron processor, quad core four thread there. Now, before we get onto the real deep dive stuff there, why am I being so worked up about this? Why is this such a big deal system? Well, when it comes to getting any kind of network attached storage system, when you're moving away from bog standard, slower hard drives, onto more exciting and faster M2 NVMEs. It has to be said that with that, there is an enormous amount of overhead and a balancing act that we have to do when weighing up all of these systems. In a perfect world, in a perfect idealistic utopian society, a system like this would be the following. It would be powerful. We want power, we want to get the job done. It would be low power consuming. We don't want to use up a load of electricity out of the wall, do we? Have you seen how much electricity costs these days? On top of that, we want it to be durable. We want this system to withstand the rigors of constant performance um, on these SSDs across the whole system and not get too hot. We also want it to be affordable. We want to be able to afford this damn thing. We don't want to break the bank. And lastly, we need the system to be cool and quiet because that's why we love SSDs. And it has to be said, that was why the older generation was so popular in the, lock, uh, in the Flash Store series. It managed to balance all of that at a fantastic price point. But the criticisms that were leveled at it were was that one, the CPU in question did not have a great deal of oomph. It didn't have the lanes, it didn't have the bandwidth afforded to it. You couldn't get much done. Secondly, it didn't have ECC memory, which the die-hard storage veterans had a real issue with, particularly on an SSD system when the data is being written so darn fast. And also, the network connectivity on the back end didn't give a huge amount of scope for so many M2 NVMe bays. So, that brings us to that brand new Flash Door Gen 2. Thanks for sticking with me. Now, the Gen 2 system rocks out the gate with that, uh, in, uh, it's got an AMD embedded Ryzen CPU, the V3C14. Yes, I'm reading it from my notes. This is a four core, eight thread processor. 
arriving at 2.3 gigahertz and can be burst when needed up to 3.8 gigahertz. It also has a 15 watt reported TDP. And now that CPU does have a variable TDP options as well from 10 to 25 watt, but I don't know how much of that's going to be integrated into the system by Acer Store. This CPU has got 20 lanes of Gen 4 to allocate across the whole system, which on an M2 system, mwah, chef's kiss. Alongside that, the CPU will spot to 32 gig of DDR5 memory, and Acer Store do confirm that this will arrive with ECC error correction code memory there, which means the extra little bit of parity data, um, not parity, I was going to say, uh, checksum as the data passes through, and a little chip that, you know, caveman terms, ultimately the data is passed through, and at the beginning and the end, uh, a comparison of the state of the data passing through the memory is compared, and uh, heal and reparation will take place to avoid things like bit rot if there is any inconsistencies as the data passes through again oversimplification just stay with me now this isn't an integrated graphic cpu so again no hdmi out none of that sp diff stuff like that this isn't going to be a system that's rocking out the gate for things like plex transcoding there this is a raw power cpu there but because it's a four core eight thread cpu there's your virtual CPUs there for your likes of VMs and containers. And ADM does arrive with its own, con uh, there's a Docker application container and Portainer, I believe, runs on it as well. But they do use VirtualBox. So they use a third party um, uh, VM tool there within ADM. But I still think that's something a lot of people can get behind there. Now, I mentioned Gen 4 architecture there. That is right. The 6 and the 12 base system, all of which are Gen 4 Lane M2 NVMe systems. So unlike Gen 3 SSDs like this one, the T-Create from Team Group, this SSD is a Gen 3 times 4 SSD, can hit 3,000 or so. This They can take advantage of Gen 4 SSDs inside the system. Again, Gen 4 SSDs, each one of those Gen 4 lanes has 2,000 megabytes per second to play with. But again, Gen 4 times 1 on each of those lanes there. Just because you've got 28 lanes to play with, that's still a lot of slots being occupied here. Presumably the 12th uh, bay one there is going to have a sophisticated little PCI switch there in the background. Now, there's going to be users hearing this wondering, wait a minute, Gen 4 times 1, that's only going to give me 2,000 megs. That SSD you waved at the screen just now, that can hit 7,000 megs. What about the other 5,000 megs I'm missing out on? And you're right, but there are users out there that would rather have 12 or 6 slots on their system rather than 2 and 4 because of the storage uh, capacity benefits there. The benefits with RAID, multi-read, multi-write activity on that system that are going to be able to create much faster internal databases in this system and more. And that's just not going to be possible to allocate Gen 4 times 4 across the entire system. And, of course, as we discussed in previous flash door videos, because it's Gen 4 times 1 that also means that heat is going to be brought down substantially. I'm still going to be very interested to see what the temperature of this system, those individual drives, are going to be in such a compact chassis. But still, nonetheless, it's great to hear that we're going to be getting Gen 4 uh, slots on all of those individual, uh, in Gen 4 lanes on each of those individual slots. But what about external network connectivity, I hear you say? You talk really loud, by the way. Now, uh, when there are the two systems, much like the Flash Door Gen 1, 6, and 12 Pro, uh, the network and interfaces are going to be different on each of these units. Uh, the the Flash Door 6 Gen 2, we're still awaiting full confirmation, but it looks like it's going to be two 5 gig Ethernet ports on the rear there. So again, with lag, port trunking, SMB multi-channel, you're looking at a potential 10 gig on the uh, Flash Door 6 Gen 2 model. But again, we're still waiting for full confirmation on that, and we're basing that on the Locker Store Gen 3 uh, information we've received. Again, more on that in another video. Now, the Flash Door 12 Pro Gen 2 is going to arrive with two 10 gig ports there so boom i'm loving the sound of that this is a 20 gig network connected system there now yes you're still gonna fully saturate that if you've got a 210 gig nick set up in your office or home environment because of all the 12 bays of gen 4 SSDs inside but that's still a lot more two gigabyte network connectivity there on that system which you know is double that of the 12 pro gen 1 that came before it there i'm not going to say it's the moon but i'm going to say it's very much on the way there also with regards to ports and connectivity these systems are going to arrive with usb 4 connectivity there so 40 gig local usb connection so you can take advantage of usb 4 external drives which take advantage internally 
on M2 architecture and NVMe uh, architecture, which means you're going to be able to get much, much, much faster backups. I'll be straight with you. The, you know, the number of devices in the market right now for USB 4 peripherals outside of storage are a bit hit and miss outside of the power delivery type stuff. But at the very least, when it comes to uh, backing up your Asus Door system on a locally connected USB drive, performance is going to be substantially faster thanks to that wider bandwidth potential. And add to all of this that Asus Door has most certainly softened its position on third-party OSs on their systems. As of about 12 months ago, maybe even 14, 16, Asus Door allowed users to use third-party OSs like Unraid and TrueNAS on their systems. And as long as the, the software that you choose to use doesn't manually or automatically burn out the hardware, such as overclocking a CPU into the sun, they will still honor your hardware warranty and support up to a point. Just don't go flashing the EMMC inside with that OS installation there. Now, this system, as it doesn't have integrated graphics or you know any kind of visual output, Installing third-party OSs is going to be a little bit more tricksy. You know, the lack of a G, uh, um, uh, KVM interface there, the lack of easy access to BIOS. It's not going to be impossible, but it's certainly going to be trickier. But it's the fact that true now um, uh, that Acer Store have softened its position, uh, its position on third-party OS installations on these systems that, for me, is going to be very appealing. Not only because the hardware inside this system is genuinely impressive for the scale but also you're not just going to be locked in on ADM which frankly ADM does run very very smoothly and ADM 5 is going to be uh, revealed in some form uh, within the next month or so it's still not as um, I would say evolved and feature rich as the likes of Unraid or TrueNAS by comparison so it's nice to have that element of flexibility for a lot of users. Price and availability is still very much up in the air because this system is not going to be arriving soon it's almost certainly going to be revealed in some formal form very 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 soon but I would say in terms of actual physical release I'd sit and wait a little while if I were you. I think we're looking at maybe the end of Q3, so August, September at the very earliest. Uh, with regards to pricing, the original Flash Door really blew people's socks off with the way they approached the pricing on this. Uh, the original Flash Door 6 and 12 Pro rocked out at that 449, 499, and then upwards to about 799 for the 10G Pro model there. I think what we're going to see here more than likely is the Flash Door 6 Gen 2 probably sitting at about 599, and the Flash Door 12 Pro Gen 2, it wouldn't surprise me if it gets closer to that 999 mark because this CPU is far more competent the network interfaces are far far more advanced and the Gen 4 architecture of the M2 NVMe's promise a great deal more performance and higher IOPS there but that is the Flash Store Gen 2 series uh, an SSD base NAS that I'm really really excited to get my hands on and I better now I'm sure you've got a lot of questions. I have. Let me know in the comments questions that you want about this because we've already spoken with Asus Store on the channel previously uh, and talked a lot more about the brand, talked a lot more about the releases, and I would like to talk to them again specifically about this product. So send me your questions to put to them. I'll canvas the questions in the uh, comments below along with the article and stuff like that on social media. We'll put out a social post and all of those questions will get aggregated together and we put those questions to Acer Store. Let me know what you want to know about this device, about the brand, what it can do, what it can't do. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's a link in the article uh, to we update as much as we know about this device over time. So if there's more information on this system, we'll pop it in the comments below. And stay tuned and keep an eye on us over at Computex at the start of June. We'll be looking, hopefully, more hands-on with this system if we come across it. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.